So here we are. OpenAI introduces O3 and O4 Mini. This is the smartest and the most capable model till date with full tool access. OpenAI O3 and O4 Mini is that. These are models which can use different tools. We don't need to specify them the tools. It is inbuilt and they can use every tool. For example, the tools such as web search. They can analyze uh, the uploaded files and other data with Python. They can reason deeply about the visual inputs and can even generate images. So all these tools which are inbuilt to ChatGPT. Also, you can give in your own custom tools in the, in the form of function calls and they can use that as well to give you pretty good and intelligent response. They have used reinforcement learning to train the different chain of thoughts and to train this model to make it a better model, a better reasoning model. If you are really want to use these models, use these for use these models uh, for these tasks. So, for example, coding, math, science, visual perception, and more. So, I set a new state-of-the-art benchmarks uh, on Code Force, uh, SWV Bench, MMMU. It performs especially strongly at visual tasks like analyzing images, charts, and graphics. Now, we have a Kaggle competition going on based on uh, recognizing patterns um, and coming up with visual solutions. Uh, this could be useful. We can see that O3 makes 20% fewer major errors than OpenAI's O1. So O3 is better than O1 and the tasks such as programming, business consulting, and creative ideation. This is the one that you can use. OpenAI O4 Mini. This is a new model. This is optimized for fast, cost-effective reasoning. And if you want to use for math, for coding and visual tasks, this is the model that you need to use. We can see that different benchmarks we will see. Uh, this is the math benchmark, math competition basically. AI Amy uh, 2024 and 2025. As you can see that O4 Mini achieves 99.5% at pass one. So the first attempt, the first time the model looks up at the question and tries to solve, it is 99.5% accurate on the first attempt. And you can see that it has 100% consensus at eight. So eight consecutive answers or eight answers uh, give the consensus correct answer, okay? And you can see that O4 Mini leverages uh, the available tools and you can see similar improvements in the AI ME 2025 uh, score as well using uh, tool use. So going to look at the benchmarks here. Uh, we have a few graphs here and you can see that on the AI ME 2024 competitive math, we can see on the left it's O1, that's the old one. O3 mini, that's a new one that we are talking, that's an old one that we have been talking about. O3 no tools this is a new one that we are talking right now you can see the improvement 91.6 percent accuracy on AIME 2024 competition math and you can see that O4 mini with no tools is 93.4 percent on the AIME 2025 again we can see the same pattern and this competition code forces we can see that uh, both O3 and O4 mini are almost comparable on the graduate level science question, we can see that O3 is the best. And you can see that this is humanities last exam. This is my favorite benchmark because as you can see, the accuracy is pretty less for all the models because this is one of the toughest humanities last exam benchmark. And you can see that not many models are able to even cross 20. Okay, so you can see that O1 Pro was 8.2% only, O3 Mini is 13%, O3 No Tools is 20%. And uh, with a few tools like Python code browsing tools, we can see that it increases. And again, a deep research is one which uh, is, is pretty good on this benchmark. Now talking about multi-model, we can see that uh, college level visual problem solving, again O3 shines here. For the visual math reasoning, O3 shines. For the scientific figure reasoning, we see that O3 shines here, 78.6%, and that's pretty good. On the coding benchmark, we can see that freelance coding task, well, O3 uh, was able to generate this much money. I mean, that's a freelance task. And you can see that software engineering task, we see that again O3. Well, 
I think O3 mini, uh, O3 is better than O4 mini for most of this task. And you can see that this is code editing. So on the whole code editing and on the difference part, on the only the when the code is when the LLM is only working on the difference between code sections versus on when it is working on the whole code. So we can see that O3 high is again it's pretty good. So instruction following again O3 shine. So you can see that uh, here as well. Uh, with O3, you can see or put Python plus browsing, agentic browsing, O3 shines. So please use O3. Now this is a uh, function calling. Now this again for airline uh, function calling or airline capability when you're using this as an airline chatbot, for example. Uh, we need to use uh, this one. So 53%, which is O3 again and when you're trying to use for retail so o1 and o3 is both are comparable i can use any one of them now they continue to use reinforcement learning especially after the introduction of reinforcement learning here uh in the in the llms uh open ai has also put their uh thoughts on using reinforcement learning and you can see significant improvements in the form of o3 and o4 mini so they're really keeping up with the latest technology uh, you know especially i'm talking about relating it with DeepSeek and other models from china now one interesting thing is that what they have brought forward is thinking with images so they can think with images so can you see can you find the name of the biggest ship so it searches sees the image and locates this bigger ship then zooms into the ship and tries to find out so zooming into the image uh, understanding the image looking at the image like a real human being it's pretty good so this model can even interpret uh, image which is blurry reversed or low quality and that's an amazing capability that will be very good to test what they're trying is uh, trying to make it agentic so when talking about agents i'm really trying out this platform as well known as agno uh, i've created one or two i mean about five six videos on agno you can check uh, my videos on agno they especially have this three reasoning uh, styles so you can see that reasoning models reasoning tools and reasoning agents so reasoning models is the thing that we are talking about okay so o3 and o4 mini are reasoning models because they don't need any external tools or external agentic uh, thinking process or styles to make them work and they can work on their own however there are two other types of reasoning that you can check out so i will create a video on this wait for the video but let's go back to openai so OpenAI is trying to make this an agentic tool use and uh, we can see that it is able to use all the tools uh, which is already present uh, with OpenAI. So we can see that if we ask this question of how will summer energy usage in California compared to last year, this model will search the web first of all, tool number one, write Python code, tool number two, generate a graph three and explain the factors behind this chaining together multiple tool calls okay it can relook at the web search multiple times go to the tools for multiple times and it's basically a self sustaining agent and that's pretty awesome now we can see that difference here so open ai03 on the left open ai01 on the right and you can see that we have asked this question so this is the very hard mass question and you can see that uh, at the end uh, we can see that o3 was able to solve the question but uh, o1 was not able to solve okay so that's a benefit of o3 with regards to cost efficiency we can see that on the x-axis we have inference uh, inference cost estimated inference cost and you can see the performance on the y-axis so you can see that uh, this yellow is what we're talking about so o4 mini o4 mini medium o4 mini and you can see that it's pretty awesome to see the inference cost is less uh, you know it's almost same but for better performance so you can see these graphs as well as estimated cost versus uh, the performance that we can see 
now uh, with regard to safety they are even more uh, careful with regard to safety because it's really important for OpenAI to take care of the safety precautions so they have in fact uh, earlier they have created a framework known as preparedness framework which is a process that OpenAI uses to track powerful AI capabilities because it's sometimes could be dangerous for example uh, you know LLMs which can help you to write uh, bug codes taking in terms of, of cybersecurity or biochemical weapons you know anything like that so they're focusing on preparing the risk that could lead to serious harm so that they are really careful that these models adhere to the security standards and safety practices okay the real world safeguards not just technical solutions now in this update they have focused on specific high risk capabilities new categories and clear capability levels scalable and faster evaluation and public reports on safeguards now they are putting out some filters for high pr uh, priority is it plausible is the risk realistic then we definitely need to take into consideration measurable can we track it yes severe would it cause major harm if yes then we need to include in our risk filters net new is it a new kind of threat uh, obviously we need to put that as a dangerous irremediable is the harm instant or irreversible there's another factor that we need to take into considerations so capability category you can see that there are different categories so they are tracking a few categories uh, bio and chemical threats so no llm will release uh, answers pertaining to dangerous bio or chemical threats cyber security threats no no and ai self-improvement this is another danger that could happen if ai self-improves and it goes to the point of destruction so as you can we can see that OpenAI is not really you know not really being not afraid of the consequences of ai they are really considering the fact that ai could be dangerous and ai has the capability of being dangerous so that's why they are checking in in the track category the ai self improvements okay and the research category for example long range autonomy sandbagging replication and autumn adaptation and breaking the safeguards in the next video i'm going to talk about agno and the other different approach of reasoning but yeah this is an exciting model it's available in the api as well uh, they have released the codex cli as well with the frontier reasoning in the llms this is an open source uh, cli that you can use it's pretty much the same as we have uh that we have the tools that we use for vibe coding okay so this is another what i would call as a vibe coding uh toolkit so codex cli so you can access it in the api and uh, we are looking forward for more interesting uh, models this is amazing man this is what openai has brought forward google has brought forward their gemini models as well which i will be talking in the subsequent videos it's amazing and we are living in this future I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.